A special edition of Mid-Morning. As the COVID-19 outbreak takes its toll on the economy, many are facing unemployment and an uncertain future. But we're here to help with now hiring, practical advice about the future job market and what work is out there right now. From college age to any age, tips from the experts on resumes to networking to presenting your best self in a virtual interview. We're answering your questions and giving you the information that you need as we are in this together. You're watching WCCO Mid-Morning with Jason DeRussia and Heather Brown. Now we're talking. Thank you for joining us for this special now hiring edition of Mid-Morning. I'm Heather Brown. And I'm Jason DeRussia. It's great to have you. Mm -hmm. We are excited to bring you some really useful information this morning because so many of our friends and neighbors going through record high levels of unemployment. The statistics are one thing and we'll talk about them, but it's the people that we want to make a difference for today. Minnesota, Wisconsin, the whole country grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's why we wanted to dedicate mid morning today, the full hour to people who are looking for work. And we want to talk about your concerns about employment, about finding these jobs, about what the economy might look like down the road. So much has changed in job hunting in just a few short weeks. We'll talk about what you can do to look for work and hopefully land that job in the very near future. We begin with the state of unemployment. The Twin Cities started the year with two job vacancies for every person looking. But more Minnesotans applied for unemployment in just the last two weeks than compared to all of last year. Since March 16th, more than 270,000 Minnesotans applied for unemployment benefits. More than 17,000 applied on Tuesday, March 31st alone. Here's Susan Elizabeth Littlefield on the workers and the industries rocked by COVID-19 and those finding opportunity during this difficult time. It's been several weeks since this Minneapolis vocalist has taken the stage. And the bar where she serves food and makes a living has gone silent too. Just like the emotional impact of not being able to just go out and see the people you care about and you work with and the joy of even playing music. I mean, that's it's really hard to not be able to still have that in my daily life. Faye Lewis has gone from two incomes to none. For the first time in her 20 years of working, she's had to file for unemployment. That's been the hard part about um, filling out all those forms and trying to get money. I actually recently just applied for food stamps because I figured why not. Unemployment is 50% of her salary, which is tricky because she's a server and tips are not included in the calculation. Is it enough? No, I'm getting $208 a week. Faye's story is the most common unemployment story right now. In Minnesota, the industries most affected by COVID-19 are food service, sales and service, office and administrative support, personal care like salons, and healthcare workers in techs and dental or elective surgery fields. 38% of those applying for unemployment in Minnesota have a high school degree or less. 41% have an associate's degree or some college, and 21% have a four-year college degree or more. Have you ever seen anything like this job market in your career? No, <laughs> it's, it's mostly because there's just so many unknowns for everybody. Dr. Leonard Lane is a Twin Cities based job coach and writer. If you have time now, even though it may seem like you have to do something urgent to also be thinking about what do you really want to do with your career in the long term? This could be used as an opportunity to think about what else you might be able to do. He says it's a good time to think about a career change or entrepreneur venture and to get some good advice. Also maybe think about doing some networking now. Um, people are really craving to have contact with people now, so instead of being a little more interruptive as it might have been in the past. And if you need a job immediately, there is a big demand right now for nursing assistants, human and social service assistants, registered nurses, customer service representatives, security guards, and personal care aides. Faye Lewis is searching those job openings daily figuring out how to survive. I had a friend come over and drop off like a huge bag of groceries to me. Like it brought honestly like tears to my eyes. Um, yeah. Sorry. She's out of work, but not out of hope. I'm hoping that everybody does their part to really do the social distancing thing so we can nip it in the bud and just get back to regular life. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield, WCCO 4 News. 
Joining us now live on Skype is Jean Bay, professor of economics at Augsburg University. Jean, thanks so much for joining us this morning. You heard those unemployment numbers that came out early this morning, staggering. The national number, 6.6 .6 million people there. I mean, as an economist, have we ever even come close to anything like this? No, because um, typically um, we've had we've had some shocks. This is a shock. So the closest we've had to a shock has been in the 70s with the oil crisis, and then in the 1980s with a with a great recession before that point. Some of the deepest. So in that point, we went from 4.4 unemployment to 10.8 within about six months. But this is even faster, and we've never tried to essentially induce a coma in an economy before. Yeah, interesting way of putting it, Gene. This is a mm -hmm. this is like a medically induced coma in that the government shut down, you know, the entire hospitality and service industry. On top of it, all the people who kind of work uh, independently and are uh, working at home, those kind of small business owners and sole proprietors, those people uh, just have absolutely no demand for their service. So it's it's a tricky thing where you can't pull the normal levers of the economy to try to get things moving right no because if you do if your job is face to face then you're unemployed and it's not just as the earlier one was talking about that unemployment is good it provides a base income but it's not going to replace all your income let alone all your other benefits but you have to worry about the salon owners and the health club owners are they going to be in business two months from now because even though they're not taking in any revenue they still have rent and other and other expenses they have to pay a lot of small businesses are under duress as well as their employees you talk about that, these small businesses, and will they make it? I wonder, do you think there's going to be some huge structural change to how our economy and how our job market even works when we do come out of this? I I, I think it depends on how long it lasts, right? I mean, if if I think the I think it's not surprising that more people now nationally are worried about the financial implications than they are about the actual illness, um, because. The reality is that the death rate is, even at 100,000, is less than tenth of 1%. It's a small number, okay? Most people who get it are, are sick, they're, but they're mildly sick. There's only a small number. But so many people have lost income, have lost businesses, so that's going to be the issue. How fast can we get back to work? Yeah, and, and do it and do it safely, right? Exactly, that's the key. Yeah, the death rate is low, but when you multiply it by the number of people who are coming down with this, when you're looking at 100, 200,000 people, perhaps you understand why the government took action here. Yes, but 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 we're running essentially a natural experiment because, as people know, Sweden did not shut down as many places, and their death rate's actually a little bit higher than ours, um, but it's still less than one percent. So the question is, what's the right approach? Because poverty causes death and illness, too. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the issue. I think it's a balancing act. It, I mean, it's an extremely delicate balancing act. And you talk about, Jason talked about the safety. You talked about the safety is getting the economy and getting the people back safely so that the economy can get running again. And we have confidence that we can go back to yeah. our workplace. Jean, I have a question about something Susan Elizabeth said in her story, as it seems as if there's almost a shift in the kinds of jobs that people should be looking for. Do you see this for people that may be out of work, the chance now to change opportunities and, and change what they've been doing before? Well, when you look at, so one thing people might think in the future is, how possible is it to work from home? There's been a couple of studies about how possible it is, and of course, the higher paying jobs are more, it's more likely you can work from home. Lawyers can work from home, software developers can work from home, but again, people, and if you're doing people to people contact, you cannot work from home. People may start to take that into account as they think about their career in the future. Any glimmer of hope for people here, Jean? I think the glimmer of hope is that some of our businesses, including Mayo Clinic, have stepped up. If you look at Minnesota, the majority of the tests now are done now by external laboratories. And so other other companies like 3M, they have they had surge uh, ideas already there. Their supply chain was ready. They've shifted to producing masks, which we desperately need for our healthcare workers. Um, My Pillow is doing the same thing. Love Your Melon is doing the same thing. So I think there's hope. 
that businesses will step up and produce what we need to produce, including the cotton swabs and all the other things. That's our hope. And Gene then Bay. that keeps people employed too. Yeah, right. yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. Gene Bay from Augsburg, thank you so much thank for you. Uh, your insight this morning. We are all in this together. So if you're looking for a job, we want to help. We have set up a now hiring section on our website where employers are sharing the job openings that they have right now. They're hiring for positions right now. And this is a huge list on here. One of the companies, International Paper, hiring for a variety of positions in multiple locations, looking for general help in production out there, maintenance technicians. You can find out information about these jobs and many others by going to WCCO.com slash now hiring. We'll continue showing different openings on air during this hour. Many people are now working or will be looking for mm -hmm. a job uh, from home. Right, so we're going to be talking about those unique challenges, but also some opportunities that could come along with staying home while you're working. And we'll be answering some of your viewer questions about jobs and unemployment. Thanks for watching this special now hiring edition of Mid Morning. Many of us are working in a way that we've really never done before. Working from home can sure add a new set of challenges to our jobs that we've never encountered before. But there are benefits too, and we thought we'd bring in our resident expert on this at <laughs> least uh, for the last uh, week and a half or so. Riley O'Connor, who's been working from the basement of his home. Riley, give us a little insight as to what it's been like to be doing your job, which usually for your whole career you've been coming into a workplace, uh, doing it from your home. Yeah, you know, I think really the biggest thing, well, first of all, I'm, I'm thankful that I have a job still that is going. So I think that's the biggest thing that I want to be, uh, that I want to talk about first, that I am very thankful that I'm, I'm still working right now. But I think, you know, the other thing is, is just kind of a challenge in a new space. You know, I mean, I live in a very small home right now. I have kids that sleep upstairs. I had to take a space that is in my basement that is very small and make it into an office and make it professional and make it look as good as I can for what I can provide to give the customer, the viewer, yeah. you know, the, the weather product that I do every day. So I think it's really, you know, the challenge is coming into that, that, that whole work experience of, of, of in your own home. You don't have all of the space that you have. You don't have all of the computer uh, equipment, uh, you know, that I did in the studio. So I think that's one one thing it is, but the overall product I'm trying to give, you know, 100% to. Um, you know, it's things like having my dog, right, on my bed, uh, on the bed next to me uh, here in the room. You know, it's things like that that are, are, are really Where's the cool dog? that Let, I can be home you can't, we with want the to kids. Yeah, you can't do that, right? you got to show us the dog. Okay. <laughs> See, I do think this helps a lot, though. Okay, well, you know, you're on these a, group chats. He needs a haircut. We all do, Riley. We all do. See, now we're talking. Oh. He does, he needs a he needs he needs a haircut. This is Conrad. He's the he's the toy schnauzer. But it's little things like this that you know make it really fun and wonderful that I can do this. You know, and the, and you know, and we're inviting people into our homes. You know, a lot right. of people have to change their work environment, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's a huge challenge. It's really just how you can make it work and right. be positive about it. And also, Riley, I mean, you two, you have two little ones there. And I think a lot of people, the challenges that I hear about working from home are also balancing that is that your partner has to sometimes take on that responsibility and then you, you switch around. Um, uh, and so I'm wondering how that right. how that part right. you're managing that part, too. Well, I think that the thing is, is I work, you know, really an overnight shift. If you think about it, I get up around 2.15 in the morning um, and I have to kind of tiptoe around the house to even get ready because the babies sleep in a room, you know, and the house is small. So if you shut a door, um, just even a, a little bit, it'll wake them up in the middle of the night. So, I mean, that's one thing. And I have to go somewhere very secluded downstairs because, you know, if the, I have a, an entry or a, a room right outside of here, but it's directly below the kids room and there's air there's vents and so if i talk loud mm -hmm. it will wake them up i've had that happen again so it's kind of just try, trying to find that quiet area you know what you're not hearing right now is i can hear them upstairs you know playing with the, the stroller my daughter's with a stroller going back and forth and then my son <laughs> with his toy lawnmower so it's it's 
it's that type of thing that you just have to kind of get used to. But you know what? I'm a very real person. Right. I'm not a showy guy by any means, and I'm just going to be real with what, what I have to work with. Good. Well, we appreciate it, and we appreciate what you're giving to us. And I know there's a lot of hard work by a lot of people here at the station <laughs> to get you to be able, and a lot of people here, Kim Johnson, for example, to, to get them all to be able to work from home. Mm -hmm. We're answering some of your questions on job searches and the economy that's coming up next. But first, another job opportunity. College Nannies and Tutors is looking for on-call temporary sitters. You can find this link and other job openings at WCCO.com slash now hiring. Since the COVID-19 outbreak started, we've been flooded with questions for viewers, so we wanted to get right to the founder of Minnesota Headhunter, Paul DeBettings. He's an IT recruiter, a real expert in this space, and Paul, things have changed so rapidly in just the past three weeks. It's truly incredible. Uh, you know, this is like week nine for me thinking about the virus. The beginning of February, I started uh, having conversations with employers about like, well, what if we need to work from home and what if we need to um, be recruiting and hiring and onboarding and all those things. And originally I was thinking this was going to be on a scale of one to 10, like a seven or an eight, but clearly we're way past 15 now. So yeah, things have changed. All right. Our viewers have asked so many uh, really good questions. So let's get right to them. Here's Maria okay. and her question. What is the best way to make my resume stand out now that so many people are applying for jobs? Great question from Maria, Paul, because in a normal environment, we face a competitive situation when applying. How do we make the resume stand out right now? Well, one thing I've been saying to everyone, whether it's a good economy or not, is have a conversation quick with yourself first and answer this question, why would I hire me? And a lot of us struggle with that to be able to articulate like why someone would want to hire me, bring them on their team uh, and, and get me into their culture. Um, a lot of times I want to say to folks, make sure that you're saying, like if you were in sales, like you increased sales this percent, if you were in marketing and did an email newsletter, not this that you just did the newsletter, but we increased uh, open rates by 7% and that brought us an extra 2.5% in revenue. At the end of the day, it's how can you benefit uh, this particular company that you're interested, whether it's cut cut costs, increase sales, to make something more efficient. Yeah, it's not why are you a good fit, it's why are you going to make a difference with that company. Absolutely. Let's see what Jenny wants to know. Hi, do you think that the stimulus bill is going to do enough to help small businesses? Oh, small businesses, Paul, I think our heart goes out to them. These are the dreamers who risk everything to start and build something. Uh, stimulus bill, your thoughts on that? Well, I am one of those folks, right? Yeah. So I think it's tonight at midnight, the SBA opens up the um, well, opens up the, the small business loan. I think it's $350 billion. And there are some questions, though, about how long is that money going to actually last? Because it's not until next Friday, I believe, that independent contractors can start trying to apply for those loans. It, it, it's going to make a difference. It's going to help employers keep some of their staff. The next question is, how long are we in this situation for, and will they have to do that again? Right, yeah. It may help you now, but what is the long-term picture? Let's go to Sarah and her question. If I've been furloughed, how could I supplement my income? Oh, Paul, Sarah asking the money question right now, I think for most people, because uh, especially in the hospitality, travel agents, hotels, restaurants, you're furloughed, you're hoping you're gonna come back, but unemployment maybe isn't enough. What, what could people do as far as finding temporary work? Well, let me project a bit. Technically, I would be one of those. Yeah. All the clients that I, or the projects I was gonna have this spring got put off. So for me in my world, it's, you know, can I work on some smaller projects? on two or three at a time versus one large project for everyone else like you guys survive right now and i don't mean that to sound so intense but you need to be able to worry about this day this week this month before we i just i don't want people to start thinking about six months from now i want people to be thinking about what they can be doing right now so if that's picking up an extra part-time job or two like like look companies are having they're not committing to full-time employees right now, yeah. but there is part-time contract project work to do. So put that on LinkedIn, have that be a part of the email or the email that you're sending to employers. Yeah, and you have to do the math, I suppose, like looking at what your unemployment benefit would be versus what that extra Absolutely. income would do for you. All right, let's get to this question from Marissa. Hi, I have a question. I'm wondering how long it will take to get our economy up and running again. Once we're able to flatten the curve, will that also mean that our economy will pick back up? 
Interesting question from Marissa, because that's where maybe some of my optimism lies in this, Paul, that once we do reopen things, there's not a structural problem here, uh, like the housing bubble or the tech bubble or any of those things. What's your take on that? Will things get cranking back up once we reopen, whenever that should happen? The optimist in me says yes, but I think of this like you're trying to start a freight train at zero miles per hour, and it's going to take a while to get that chugging and moving and getting it back to where it was. Watch, they talked about a V shape, a U shape, an L shaped recovery. A V means fast. Yeah. Me is one that's going to be at the bottom for a while, then come back. And L's like a hockey stick. It's going to take a while, and then it's going to slowly ramp up. Uh, Man, if anyone knows the answer to that, send me a note. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. So that I can. Right. So you can I, place the right I, I bat hope that there. Helps. I know. We don't know which shape it'll be for sure. Talk a little bit about the emotional toll this is taking on people, because as a recruiter, you talk with a lot of people who've been, frankly, there are people who've been out of work uh, before this all started. What are, What are you hearing? So I wrote a blog post about three weeks ago that I was a little less worried about the healthcare side of this because I can't do anything about that. Uh, I was more worried about the economic situation that we're finding ourselves in. I'm really worrying about what's going on in people's homes, right? It's the idea of now you're home and you're with your spouse or in my case, right? I'm a, I'm a single dude. And so I don't, the isolation part's starting to get to me and I'm an introvert by nature. I tweeted yesterday, I haven't hugged somebody in 21 days and that's a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But the idea is that, you know, create routine for yourself. Uh, make it so that you're still getting up the same day, you're still taking a shower, that you're ironing a shirt every day, like whatever it is to keep yourself into a rhythm of things. And the other part is simply is this, is that you know we talk about um, keeping um, uh, physical distance. Mm. I, I don't want people to be separating themselves emotionally or from people, right? So still doing these conversations, hopping on a Google Hangout or whatever. Um, it it's helps, just, it's it makes just, a huge these difference. These are the things that we need to be doing. Yeah. yeah. All right, Paul, I know you have one message that you wanted to send out here. Hey, so I haven't seen my mom since Christmas. Hey, mom. Oh, man, I love that. We love you too, Paul's mom. What's your mom's name? I own. All right, we love you. Thanks for watching. Paul, great advice. Thank you so much. WCCO.com slash links. We'll get you to Paul's Minnesota Headhunter blog. Lots of job news, lots of advice there online. Just go to WCCO.com. Heather? That was a great conversation with Paul there, Jason. Thank you. Like with most things during this crisis, the way you search for a job will likely be changing. So we're getting some advice on resumes, networking, how to negotiate with a prospective employer, plus job hunting tips for college grads who suddenly find themselves in a very different situation than they were expecting. But first, the Lutheran Home Association does have immediate openings available for caregivers They'd be certified or non-certified, nurse managers, activities, housekeeping, plus more. Let us know and find out more at WCCO.com slash now hiring. You're watching WCCO Midmorning with Jason DeRussia and Heather Brown. Now we're talking. Welcome back and thank you so much for watching this special now hiring edition mm -hmm. of Midmorning. Around the country and right here in Minnesota, people are filing for unemployment in record numbers. We're hearing from people facing this head on, including Ashley Baysands. She's a baker at Sugar and Spice Sweetery that's in Maple Grove. And Baysands applied for unemployment two weeks ago after her hours were cut dramatically. But the mother of four can't wait much longer to find out whether or not she's eligible for the benefits. When I go on to the unemployment insurance website, I don't have access to anything. I can't. Um, I can log into my account, but there's no information available. We were able to fall back a little bit on savings, but it's not going to get us through the next month. The Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development knows this is a problem. They say that they've added 75 more people to handle this huge influx of calls, but it's seen more application in just the last couple of weeks than they did all of last year. Searching for a job will be very different, Jason, in this new environment. So we Skyped with Catherine byers breed from the Career Consulting and Job Hunt Service, Arbaz, to get advice on resumes, networking, and negotiating. Well, Catherine, thanks so much for joining us here today. We know that uh, guiding people through hard economic times is something that you've done in the past. 
Yeah, definitely. During the Great Recession, um, absolutely. In fact, I teamed up with you guys back then. Yeah, so been here before. Unfortunately, Not fun to be right? Here again, but yeah. definitely have some tips. Well, mm -hmm. things have changed since that time for sure. Let's talk about resumes. Resumes are very different from like the first resume I did when I was looking right. for a job. What kind of things should job seekers be highlighting? Yeah, so gone are the days of the long formal resume. Resume, they really need to be short and concise and really built for your future boss, not your past boss. So what I often say to people is you should have a master resume with everything in the kitchen sink that you refer to, to build that really brief condensed snapshot that you put forward when you're going after specific jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so keep it short, keep it relevant for that target job. Uh, lots of white space, easy to read, and you have to make sure that it can make it through the online applicant tracking systems also. Mm -hmm. This is a strange time right now because a lot of times if you're out searching for a job, you're going to happy hours, you're doing networking, you're having lunches or coffees, and you can't do any of that right now. So what sort of advice do you have people to continue to do this kind of networking? Absolutely. Well, the great news is this time around we have incredible online tools at our fingertip. Uh, so LinkedIn is the most important. They've got to be out there on that. But you also can get a job using Facebook. And if you are on Twitter and active on Twitter, you can find opportunities out there too. So my top tips for people about networking during this time is number one, do it daily. Number two, do not ask for a job right out of the gate. Your, your most important thing to do when you're networking online, especially when you're reaching out for the first time, is to find common ground and connect. And in the middle of this coronavirus epidemic, the first thing you need to ask is, how are you doing? How's your family? And is there anything I can help you with? Not, can I give you, can I get a job? But anything I can help you with. And then let them come back, reply to you. So you really want to find common ground and get them to connect first and start a conversation and resist the urge to ask for a job right out of the okay. gate. Hold back and have that be the second phase of your conversation. Let's, and let's, lastly, oh yeah, go ahead. leverage people that you know. Mm. So right. reach out to mutual connections and ask them to introduce you to hiring managers and recruiters. Smart. I think we all want to help our friends and our neighbors out right now. Let's get some interviewing advice too, because people are going to be doing it through Zoom or Skype or FaceTime or not necessarily in person. Uh, what sort of tips do you have for the way you kind of make that impression during an interview? Yeah, so first of all, the prep is critical. And I always say to people, um, likeability is the most important issue and so I've interviewed thousands of people over the years and I hate to say it but the fastest way to lose an opportunity is to be either aggressive or completely disengaged and so you have to really figure out how to kind of check your nerves at the door, practice with a friend, um, prepare well. And uh, there are really, in terms of preparing for the interview, there are tons of resources out there. Uh, but I did a live stream that you can get last week for free. It's on our website at ourbez.com on how to prep and how to show up for a video interview. But look in the camera. If you can stand, prop your laptop up on some books and really focus on listening, taking notes. Um, and engaging with the person in front of you. And uh, the great news is you can have a whole bunch of cheat sheets out in front of you, and that can really help you. <laughs> it's true. Nail that yeah, thing. harder to pull off in person. Exactly. For sure. uh, Catherine, once you do get that job, though, you still have to negotiate your salary or your benefits or those mm. things. That stuff doesn't go away. It can be harder to do it not in person. What do you have advice for folks who need to do that, that tough discussion? Yeah, so the first question that I get all the time when the economy is in a tough spot is, can I negotiate in a tight economy? And the answer is yes, um, especially if you understand your value to the organization. So think about it. The companies that are hiring right now are hiring because they really need your help. So if you can do your market research on, on what competitive rates are out there, and if you can ask some really good questions during the interview along the lines of, you know, what's this business problem costing you? If you don't bring me in to solve it, what's it gonna cost you? And, and what's the win on the back end if I'm the right candidate for you? So figure out your value to the organization and that will help you go in with confidence. Companies are definitely still expecting you to negotiate at that final stage. 
if you're going into an industry that is hiring aggressively right now, absolutely you can command top dollar. If you're going into an industry that is really suffering right now uh, because of the coronavirus situation, then you may need to be a little more flexible on uh, starting salary and see if you can sweeten your own pot yeah. with a six month review, vacation, things like that. Very good. Mm -hmm. Great advice, Catherine. I, I think we've helped a lot of people today. Thank mm -hmm. you. I hope so. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Our best does have free resources for people looking for jobs, including a, a job hunt checklist and a daily live stream on consulting and job searches. Go to WCCO.com slash links for more information. Boy, Heather, this is a weird time for college right. seniors. Their final year suddenly interrupted. I mean, just graduation and even really beyond. Mm. So what we did now is we reached out to Avenica and they're an education to work platform that's based right here in Minneapolis and we asked them for some tips for college students and the question number one that we put to them is what's the best way to stand out to a potential employer and the Avenica CEO Scott Detman told us to use meaningful examples when explaining your skill set or experience and for sure, don't be afraid to cite some examples of things that you've done in college, maybe leadership positions there that you held. Next question for college grads or soon to be grads. Can you provide tips on using social media? And the first thing Scott says is to clean up your profile. Yes, you know what we're talking about here. The borderline, edgy posts, the party pictures, that sort of stuff. During the pandemic, employers have more time to go online and check you out. He also recommends following people in the business area you want to work in, ask for help, build your social network. You may find openings that way. And question number three, our last guest, Catherine, talked about a little bit there, but we asked Scott, what are the best ways to interview remotely? And he says, treat those remote interviews as you would normal in-person interviews. You still need to dress professionally. You need to test your setup first, whether or not you're using Skype or Zoom or FaceTime. Know how to use it, know how to get on it quickly because some employers might consider not knowing how to use these programs the same as perhaps not even being able to find the office for an in-person interview. Yeah, it's the price of admission today, isn't it? Question four, how do you not get discouraged? If employers are not hiring right away, mm. I mean, even in a regular climate, I don't know. I, I graduated in May and didn't get a job until a couple of months later. Uh, Scott recommends that you just kind of keep this in perspective. The hiring climate has drastically changed. It is a difficult environment for candidates with all types of experience. So being a college grad may be even more difficult for you. Avanica is providing free access. They have something called a Pathways program, and they're opening it up to everybody during this pandemic. So you can go to WCCO.com slash links just for students. So a really great uh, option for you to check out. You're probably going to be applying for a job on camera instead of in person, so we are getting some tips on putting your best self forward through the lens. But before that, we have another job prospect. Kemp's has openings right now in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Farmington, and Rochester. They need mechanics, drivers, and some summer assistance. You can head on over to WCCO.com slash now hiring if you're interested. The way you connect with a current or future employer is likely changing. So chances are that you could be on camera instead of meeting or interviewing a person face to face. So we Skyped with executive presence consultant Polly Meyer to find out how to make your best impression. Polly, thanks so much for joining us. We know you work with a lot of clients who already are kind of transforming the way they present themselves. What sort of advice do you have for people? This is a new world that everyone, or, well, maybe it isn't that new mm -hmm. for the job search the way it's going right now. Well, you know, it, it is a new world. You know, video job interviews have been around for a long time, but the majority of them are face to face. But now everything has changed. Everyone is in the same boat together. And because of that, we're all trying to figure it out together. And there's a, a sense of forgiveness that comes across right now, you know, if the lighting is bad or the audio is bad. But what if you had different strategies that would actually put you ahead of that curve so that you had that competitive edge? Mm -hmm. So I have five simple strategies that are gonna help your viewers make a very powerful impression the next time they are on that on-camera interview. Cool, let's so get to first, it, let's go. Number one. 
Number one is move your camera up to eye level. Whether you have a cell phone or a laptop, a desktop, a GoPro, move that camera up so that it's slightly above eye level. Because here's what I'm seeing. The majority of the people that I do videos with, they have the camera too low. So they're basically looking down like this which means that whoever they're talking to gets a clear shot right up their nose. Right? <laughs> Not a good thing, mm -hmm. right? Number two, make sure that you have great lighting. Now, all this might mean is moving in front of a window so that the window is in front of you or bring in a, a diva light or a ring light. They're very inexpensive on Amazon. Last um, worst case scenario is go through the house, gather your lamps, Put them behind your camera or your laptop or your cell phone. Just play around with it a little bit. You want to have good lighting on your face so that we can see you. Mm -hmm. What happens is many people have that window behind them or to the side, and it casts these really awful shadows on your face, which are going to make you look tired, older, mm -hmm. and more ghoulish, okay. right? So we want to have that nice key light. Let's get to now, number three. Three, three is the eye gaze. When you are on that on job, when, the, when you're on that, that interview, you want to look at the camera lens when you're talking, not the screen, because that camera, that when you're looking at the camera, it creates a nice eye contact, which demonstrates confidence. Confidence equates to certainty in the minds of others, and people pay for that certainty. Too many people look at the screen, and when they're looking at the screen, now you're not connecting with anybody. Good, really Tip good. Tip number four, check your backdrop. Your backdrop should reflect the impression that you're wanting to make on the people who are interviewing you. Too many times I see bedroom closets with the doors open. I see messy kitchens. I see cluttered desks and countertops. If you're going for a leadership position and you're showing, you're dem wanting to demonstrate that you're organized and on top of things, the last thing you want is a messy, cluttered backdrop. So be intentional, bring in books, bring in soft items, bring in things that represent the brand that you're wanting to get across. Okay, and number five? Number five is energy. There's something about the camera lens that just sucks the energy out of people. If you have two equally matched candidates and one has more energy and the other one is boring, guess who has the competitive advantage right now? The one who is bringing the energy, enthusiasm, and excitement for being there. And Polly, Those are my five strategies. Right. And Polly, I don't want to sound trivial on this, but hair and makeup and your appearance, they still do matter, even if this is something on video conferencing. Thank you, Heather, for bringing that up. Absolutely. Because it's the first thing that we are judging you on, right? And I hate to say the word judging, but that's exactly what's happening. First, it's your appearance. Then it's your voice. So if you are a man or a woman, yes, men, Jason, yes, men, <laughs> we, need, we need facial powder or we need those blotting tissues. So if you're a man, you just want to go to the pharmacy or Target and you want to pick up a translucent powder, just use the sponge and you're going to tap it over. It's going to absorb those oils on our faces and our heads. This is for women as well. And because the lighting, because now you have that key lighting in front of you, it's going to pick up those natural oils on our yeah, faces and sure. it's going to bounce the light off of them and then it's going to distract from our message. Polly, these are great tips. Mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Thanks. Polly Meyer has more resources on her website to help you make that memorable and lasting impression. Go to WCCO.com slash links. Grocery stores are looking for workers as they are keeping families stocked up. More on the Types of jobs being offered at grocery stores next. First, Associated Bank is looking for tellers, teller supervisors, and bankers. You can head on to WCCO.com slash now hiring for more information. Grocery stores are open and really the workers there are doing incredible work keeping the shelves stocked and doing their part to stay safe. Keep them safe, keep us safe and healthy too. At High V, they've installed barriers at checkout lanes. That's where shoppers are really in the closest contact with the people working there. High V and other grocers 
are also looking for workers. Yeah, we reached out with them and they said they're looking for help with restocking the aisles along with online pickup and delivery of grocery orders. They told us people who may have temporarily lost their jobs or are out of school or are looking to make some extra money, they are hiring those kind of positions. You can find hy V and other grocery store jobs on our website, WCCO.com slash now hiring. We really hope that you will be able to use this online resource we put together and we will continue to update it as new employers send us the jobs and they come in. We also wanted to let you know about another resource that we have available during this stressful time. It's a WCCO community resource page. We want to help you navigate this as best as we can. The community page. Uh, has all sorts of stuff, and it's no mistake that we start with mental health resources. The reality is this is stressful for so many of us. Trying to help our restaurants out as well with a list of curbside dining options. All of this at WCCO.com slash community. Mm -hmm. So, Riley, what's it looking like out there today? Because we know tomorrow's kind of the day when most of us are going to have to stay inside. <laughs> Uh, yeah, tomorrow is going to be kind of that chilly brawl day, but today we are starting off dry. Still going to be fairly mild in the upper 50s. Now, rain will start to move in later today and especially this evening. That wintry mix tomorrow. Looks like we have a dry day on Saturday. Warmer into next week, though, back to the 60s, but a few shower chances are going to be in there as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks, Riley. Right. Want to let everybody know who's out there struggling. Uh, there are so many people in the same boat, and uh, we're thinking of you. We yeah. see you. We support you.